The ACS Catalysis Lectureship is a collaboration between the ACS Division of Catalysis Science and Technology and the journal ACS Catalysis. This year we are pleased to recognize Professor John Hartwig, Henry Rappaport Chair of Organic Chemistry at the University of California, Berkeley, and Senior Faculty Scientist at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Congratulations, John, on winning the 2013 ACS Catalysis Lectureship. Thanks very much. Of course, this is really a, a recognition that is for my students and postdocs and all the contributions they've done over the years. John, so as an undergraduate at Princeton, what made you decide to uh, pursue chemistry and ultimately launch a career in uh, chemistry research? Well, I actually went to Princeton to study electrical engineering. I was uh, mostly a math and science student all the way through, uh, through prior schooling. And uh, my father urged me to do electrical engineering because he saw the great opportunities in that area. But one of the requirements for engineering was to take freshman chemistry. And Maitland Jones, uh, who often taught organic chemistry, taught freshman chemistry when I took it. And it was a terrific course. And I uh, found that I really liked the three-dimensional aspects of chemistry and the dynamics of chemistry. And then took sophomore organic chemistry with Martin Semelhack. And so it's really those two that uh, sparked my interest in uh, in chemistry and then I did undergraduate research with Maitland Jones. So having chosen uh, chemistry as a career path then you decided to go on and obtain a PhD in chemistry uh, at the University of California in Berkeley. Could you say anything about your experience there? Uh, sure, so uh, from my undergraduate education I was very interested in reaction mechanisms and uh, it seemed to me that there were a lot of opportunities to study reaction mechanisms with transition metal chemistry. And so I joined Bob Bergman's group and we began very rapidly a collaboration with Dick Anderson and I worked with the two of them during that time uh, gaining a lot of expertise both on the synthesis of transition metal complexes and, and studying the mechanisms of the reactions they undergo. John, the focus of uh, your career has been on the use of catalysis and organic synthesis. Uh, could you comment on how catalysis has changed organic synthesis over the course of your career? Sure, there's been a tremendous change in how synthesis is done. One might even say there's been a revolution in the way organic synthesis is conducted. Um, so I can tell you a couple short stories about that. So when I started in 1992, if you just look at one of the you know, thickest issues of the Journal of American Chemical Society and look for articles on catalysis, there's generally very few. And, and, and the thickest issue has a paper by two inorganic chemists on catalysis, but no organic chemistry, no uh, applications to organic synthesis. And about that time, I went to a pharmaceutical company uh, to give my first talk at a, at a place like that. And uh, I was meeting with someone, and they asked what I was doing. And I said I was interested in catalytic methods to form carbon-nitrogen bonds and carbon-boron bonds. And he uh, interrupted me and said, yes, but what are you doing that we would be interested in? And of course, now, uh, on an everyday basis, medicinal chemists, process chemists conduct uh, catalytic transformations, many of them cross-couplings, and now, uh, to some extent, CH bond functionalization reactions. And of course, in the academic world, essentially every total synthesis, every synthesis of a, a compound for function, whether it's materials or uh, med medicine, uses catalytic transformations. Your research intimately combines the study of catalytic mechanisms with organic synthesis. Could you comment on the importance of uh, mechanistic understanding to the development of new catalysts? Sure. I think that uh, there's always a balance between uh, mechanistic studies and you know, evaluation of reaction parameters. And certainly, uh, getting that right balance is one of the tricks to being able to discover and develop uh, catalytic transformations. But in the work that we've done, and I think we found that the major breakthroughs have come from some mechanistic study or mechanistic insight that we've gained on the reaction. In some cases, that is the identity of what the active catalyst is, which is often very different than what we can make that step occur faster. Um, often, to be honest, the answers that come out of those studies are things that we probably should have known before we did them, but uh, they certainly guided us toward what the important factor was in the reaction. And I like to think of the mechanistic studies as getting us out of a local minimum uh, toward a catalyst and or a genre of catalyst that can really uh, allow us to develop the reactions with much further scope and much greater activity than we could have without that insight. John, you recently spent a significant amount of time developing a textbook uh, reflecting your ideas in organic synthesis and how catalysis fits into organic synthesis. Can you comment on your experience as a researcher and how that is reflected in the way that you've developed that textbook? Uh, sure. So I guess uh, I should point out that 
when I started in graduate school, the Coleman, Hegedus, Norton, and Finke text was published the same year, and I learned a tremendous amount from that book. And uh, that book uh, had not been revised for about 20 years. And when I decided to uh, undertake that task, but there's been so much that's been done in the field over that 20 years, and as you mentioned, a lot of it uh, related to catalysis and the ability to use catalysis and organic synthesis, that it really morphed into a, a new text. And, uh, and so the, my hope when, as I was writing that text was that it would be useful not just for courses, but for the many people who practice catalysis and organic synthesis on an everyday basis at a pharmaceutical company, for example, who did not have a formal training in the area. And so by having that book and reading that book, they could get a more organized uh, view of how organometallic chemistry and the fundamental reactions relate to the catalytic chemistry they're doing on an everyday basis. You've worked on several reactions in organic synthesis over your course of your career, perhaps being best known or associated with catalytic amination and borylation reactions. Uh, but in the last six years, you've uh, studied a, a variety of other chemistries as well. Are there particular topics that are currently ongoing within your lab or that you've worked on in the recent past that you're particularly excited about? Uh, sure. Well, I would say that, as you mentioned, there are several reactions that we've worked on for actually my entire career, uh, one of those being the CH borylation chemistries. But in the past several years, we've uh, identified a new catalyst for that transformation which has allowed us to be able to functionalize aliphatic CH bonds um, uh, with other functional groups in the molecule in a ways that I think are now practical for applications in synth synthesis. Um, and we've also been able to extend that chemistry to the silylation chem reactions, uh, to be able to do silylations of arenes as well as directed silylations of aliphatic CH bonds. So the identification of that catalyst through the mechanistic studies you alluded to earlier has really changed, I think, the uh, scope and ability to do the borelation chemistry. Um, in other areas, in the area of hydroamination, uh, we just recently published uh, one paper and have submitted another on the first additions of NH and OH bonds, at least that we've accomplished, to totally unactivated alkenes. In the allylic substitution area, we've been able to develop uh, conditions for diastere selective reactions for the first time with an iridium catalyst. Uh, and the iridium catalysts lead to the branch isomers and are distinct from the palladium catalysts for those sorts of transformations. Um, and in the cross-coupling area, actually, we focused recently on uh, using copper for cross-coupling uh, to form carbon-fluorine bonds and carbon-carbon bonds with fluoroalkyl groups and also to try to understand the mechanism of the CN coupling with copper catalysts. And so I think we've, in the past few years, been able to get some real insight into the mechanisms of the copper-catalyzed reactions. Now we've also looked at uh, ways to do high throughput catalyst discovery that we could blend in with uh, mechanistic analysis and published a paper last year on that that um, we hope inspires other groups but also hope to be a tool for our own group for new reaction discovery. You spent the majority of your career studying transition metal chemistry and mechanisms, catalysis and organic synthesis, but most recently you've started to work on biomass conversion and problems in energy. Uh, what has motivated that transition? At the University of Illinois, uh, there was the Energy Biosciences Institute that was beginning there. Uh, that's a BP-supported institute for uh, biofuels. The partner institution is UC Berkeley, so when I moved to UC Berkeley, I could simply continue on uh, in that program. And so that program really uh, inspired me to begin to think about how to use our knowledge of uh, catalytic transformations of arenes toward biomass conversion, particularly the transformations of lignin. So our role really has been, or our goal has been, to discover new reactions uh, of either homogeneous or heterogeneous catalysts that would begin to allow people to think of new ways to break down lignin into useful building blocks. And so, uh, again, one of the areas that we've made a contribution to in just the few, for last few years has been uh, new catalytic transformations uh, with nickel systems that lead to the cleavage of carbon-oxygen bonds the reduction of carbon-oxygen bonds without reduction of the arene for the first time. So you're a member of the Center for Enabling New Technologies in Catalysis and NSF's Center for Chemical Innovation as well as Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Can you comment on your experiences uh, working within those two uh, larger organizations on your uh, catalysis development? Sure. So the SENSI program is a national program. Uh, with many groups that study homogeneous catalysis, heterogeneous catalysis, as well as biocatalysis. 
and uh, all of the projects in that group are collaborative. And this provides a great experience for our students and postdocs uh, to be able to interact with many different faculty, see a, a lot of different projects related to catalysis, and really augment the kind of information they get during their, uh, during their postdoctoral studies or their uh, PhD degrees. And for the PIs, it's just a great experience to be able to interact with, uh, uh, with people on various projects, to brainstorm on different projects, and then of course to actually conduct several projects in collaboration with other researchers. And so we've worked with uh, a number of people on, on emanation chemistry that would be more uh, for um, uh, commodity chemical research new types of CH activation reactions, which is a major focus of that center. And also we've worked uh, with Hui Min Zhao, a, a colleague at the time at Illinois, and uh, still collaborating with him now that we're at Berkeley, on uh, combining organometallic systems with enzymes to, in, in novel ways. And at LBL, of course, I've only been at Berkeley for a short time, so I'm still um, um, you know, learning what the opportunities are at LBL. But again, it, it's really a program on catalysis that I'm part of at LBL, which leads to a lot of interactions with my colleagues uh, at Berkeley on, uh, on particular transformations one might want to do, but we're also really focused on new ways to do catalysis and new ways to think about how to combine, again, homogeneous catalysis, heterogeneous catalysis, and biocatalysis toward uh, goals that would be for green chemistry um, or for uh, new ways to, uh, for energy production. Congratulations again, John, on winning the 2013 ACS Catalysis Lectureship. We look forward to the celebration of this award at the fall ACS meeting in Indianapolis, where you will present on your work and where some of your friends and colleagues will present as well. Uh, thank you very much for taking part in this interview. Well, thanks very much for the honor. Uh, I look forward to the meeting in Indianapolis. It should be a great symposium with a number of people who've made major contributions to catalysis over the years.